Now that we've learned how to make basic selections, we're going to try and tackle hair, which is a much more complicated selection. Obviously, we don't want to try and cut out by hand all these little strands of hair. And luckily, Photoshop makes this easy for us. So as I look at this, though, I realize I probably could have cut this a little bit closer to make Photoshop a little bit happier about life here. So what I'm going to do is hit the letter L to get my lasso tool. Okay, and I'm just going to make a closer selection that's a little bit closer to where his hair actually is. And this will help us out here in just a second. You'll see why. I'm going to come back over here. And then as soon as I let go, it closes that gap. I'm going to make sure that's selected. I'll hit Alt Delete, Command D to deselect, or I could have gone up to Select, Deselect. Okay. And now um, I'm just going to keep working around here. And the reason why I'm only doing these little chunks and I'll hit Alt Delete is because if I, if I had to try and trace all the way around and then I'll hold down the space bar to move and then keep coming over here, it then I have to, if I, if I just let go here, it closes the gap as a circle across his forehead and I don't want to do that. Um, so what I would have to do then is come back all the way around. I'm still holding down the mouse. I hit the space bar to move. I'm still holding down on the mouse to basically make this like loop shape, okay? So that's why I'm just quickly grabbing little chunks, hit Alt Delete, again making sure I'm still on my mask layer. And again, just trying to get rid of some of that extra white space that I left. So over here, it's not too bad, but we'll, we'll just remove a little bit of it. Getting it closer to the hair that I want to select. And the reason why is what we're going to do now is I'm going to hit Command and click right on this mask. We hold on Command and click on the icon. It brings the selection back. And that's a shortcut actually you can use on any layer. If I Command click on anything, it'll put a selection around that layer. Uh, quick detour, let's say I have a shape here this random shape that I've drawn. If I hit command and click on that layer, it puts a selection on whatever pixels it sees in there. Okay, so I'll delete that layer. I'll click back on my mask. I'll hold down command. So I get that little tiny, I don't know if you can even see it, but that square on my hand cursor. I'll click once and my eye, my marching ants, my selection comes back. All right, now I'm gonna hit the letter M to make sure my square selection tool is selected. And the reason why is because when I hit that letter M key, let me go back to, let's see what was on, maybe the pen tool. You see I've got pen tool options up here in my heads up display. By hitting the letter M, I've got my selection tool or one of my selection tools. I could do that on the lasso as well. But what you see is up here, I've got this refine edge option that shows up when I have the lasso tool or the selection tool. <laughs> Hey, sorry to interrupt. Let me cut in on this lecture real quick. I have an update for you. I was about to show you how the Refine Edge tool worked, but in the latest version of Photoshop, when you go to hit the letter M, instead of the saying Refine Edge, it now says Select and Mask. The other thing that I'm about to show you is I, when I made this video, this layer was a smart object, and I found I've had better luck with my selections if I right-click on this and may and rasterize the layer. So let me go ahead and deselect this, Command D to deselect. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna say rasterize layer. Now with that rasterize, I'll Command click on my shape or on my uh, mask layer again. I'll hit the letter M and now I'm gonna click up here on select and mask. Now what I'm gonna do over here on the left hand side, I'll hit the letter R, but this brings up my refine edge brush tool and now I can start painting in here and you'll notice you'll get a much better selection right away and that should help you out a lot I've been getting a lot of questions about this and I hope this clears it up go ahead and watch the rest of this lecture there's some great tips and tricks and then be sure to catch the video that I made that gives you even more detail about the new Photoshop selected mask tool all right continue on thanks guys you see I've got pen tool options up here in my heads-up display by hitting the letter M, I've got my selection tool, or one of my selection tools. I could do that on the lasso as well, but what you see is up here, I've got this refine edge option that shows up when I have the lasso tool or the selection tool. I can click on that refine edge, and now it brings up this dialog box here where I can paint over the edges, and Photoshop is smart enough to know what's dark and what's the hair that it's trying to keep and I'm just kind of guiding it to where I want it to make the selection for me. So I just kind of paint over the hair a little bit and look at that, it just knocks out everything behind that's not hair. So this refining edge tool is amazing. It really saves a ton of time. So I can click over here and just kind of drag around the image to finish my selection. 
And in this case, this is why I, you can see it's kind of struggling with this orange edge a little bit, uh, which is why I went through and cleaned up that white selection, just so it was a little bit tighter in on things. Okay, and I could spend a lot of time doing this. And if you have a hard time seeing what it's actually doing, I can click on this view button and I could put it, say, on white. In this case, it's a white background, so maybe I want to put it on black and see what my selection is doing. You can see we've got a little bit of bleed through. I'll let my computer catch up here. Let's put it back on the overlay. Okay, so we're coming through and we're just getting the selection refined and you could spend a lot more time on this for the sake of this video I don't want to linger too far here I just want to show you the principle of how we could do this so once we get it close to how we like it and I'm using the spacebar again I'm holding on the spacebar to get my hand tool to kind of move around and see if it's close enough and then once we're done the output we could put it to a selection to a layer mask to a new layer right now I'm just gonna leave it as a selection I'll hit OK and I want to add it to this other selection I have. Now here's the catch. It's selecting everything on the inside. So if I hit Command Delete and fill it with white, well that doesn't really do me any good because I've already got that selection there. If I hit Alt Delete and fill it with black, well that doesn't help me either because now we're filling the inside of my selection with black and it hides my image. So I'm going to hit Command Z. So what we really need to do is invert our selection. So if I zoom out, you can see we've selected the image here, but honestly what I want to delete is this white space around it, so I want to select everything but that. So I'll come up to Select, Inverse, or I could have hit Shift, Command, I, and now my selection is everything except for the middle. So I can add that to my mask here. I'll click here. I'm going to fill it with black, so I'll hit Alt, Delete, and now you can see I've got a pretty good selection of his hair. And again, this is this is a pro yeah, man, look at that. You, you can see it's almost perfect. Um, I could have done a better job up here, but we're, we're just trying to blitz through this so you can get the principles and see how it's going. So once that selection is how you like it, now is the fun part. We can start adding images behind or, or working with layers to bring them in front of or behind different text elements. And we're going to go ahead and do that in the next lesson.